the man who attempts to keep the commandments of God from a sense of obligation merely because he's required to do so will never enter into the joy of obedience. He does not obey. When the requirements of God are accounted a burden because they cut across human inclination, we may know that the life is not a Christian life. True obedience is the outworking of a principle within. It springs from the love of righteousness, the love of the law of God. The essence of all righteousness is loyalty to our Redeemer. This will lead us to do right because it is right. Because right doing is pleasing to God. Christ Object Lessons, page 97, paragraph 3. God is good. And all the time. Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations psalm 145 verse 17 the lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works as i've said before it is impossible for god to do anything wrong and as i have said regarding my own life god has never done me anything wrong all my blessings have come from God. All my problems I have brought on myself. And even though I brought them on myself, God stepped in, in and helped me out of them. Can you say amen for God? And so I love God very much. And if I'm faithful, I will see his face someday. Revelation 22 verse 4. And they shall see his face. I want to look into the face of God and not be consumed because God is a consuming fire and the only reason why God is a consuming fire is because of sin he is not a consuming fire to a sinless being he's a consuming fire only where there is sin that's why Christ came to get sin out of us that we may return to the relationship Adam had before he sinned which was face to face communication with God how was your day it was fine is there anyone present now for the very first time since the conference began may I see your hands very first time you slipped in this evening anyone is there a hand anywhere I cannot see there's a light interfering with my vision no one no one no one where are our guests you're not seven the Adventists but you've been with us all along just raise your hand just uh, uh, God bless you God bless you and God bless you I really mean that very sincerely God bless you our subject for this evening the cure for frustrated Christians what did I say the cure for frustrated Christians before I plunge into the message, let me politely but firmly ask you, making sure mine is off. Yes, it is. If you're not using this, make sure it's turned off. If you are using it, turn the sound all the way down. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. God's words will change your lives. My words cannot do that. So I'll keep my opinions strictly to myself, and I will give you, which I'm sure you'll appreciate, thus saith the Lord. And nobody said, Amen. And the third favor, think. Think. Isaiah 118, come now. Let us do what? Reason together. Let's put two and two together and make four. The high God will come down and reason with you. And he will listen to whatever you have to say. He listen to your side, then he'll give you his side, which is found from Genesis to Revelation. And then he'll give the spirit to induce you to see things his way. 
heads bowed, eyes closed. My Father, I come to you in the name of my Savior Jesus Christ, who is your Son. I've had this burden to speak this evening, and I assume the burden is from you. I hope I have not falsely accused you. As I stand before those whom you love beyond measure, put a word in my mouth. In Numbers 23 verse 5 and 23 16, the Bible says, the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth. Balaam went to preach for profit. I have not come for that reason. If you can put a word in Balaam's mouth, put a word in my mouth. Give me simple, direct language. Help me to speak fearlessly, but compassionately. Bless these precious young men and young women, dear God. Satan wants them. And so many of the youth cooperate with Satan in their destruction. But as the word is preached, Father, let that trend change. Bless those online. Bless the families of the youth. Bless Zimbabwe, this lovely country. Guide the minds of the leaders, dear God, that the decisions they make may bless this nation, not only at the top, but at the very bottom. Do this for every nation represented by those watching. Thank you, my Father for the high honor of speaking for you. Touch the sick, save the lost, have mercy on me, now possess me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. What's our subject? The cure for frustrated Christians. Let us go to John 15. John 15, well, no, let's go to Matthew 5 first. It is now just past 8.30. I do not know what my limits are. The authorities did not inform me, but I will try to practice temperance even in preaching. Matthew 5, we read from verse 14. Matthew 5, reading from verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Read the next verse carefully. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Look at the verse microscopically. Let your light. That word your does not mean light you naturally possess. No sinner naturally possesses light. But the light placed in you, in that sense it's your light. Let that light shine. The verse does not say you shine. It says, let the light shine, which means Jesus Christ understands we put impediments in the way of the light. There is a light that's within us placed by God that is intended to shine out. And Jesus says, let it shine. Why is it that you don't have light to shine? Let's look at how the Bible describes the unconverted man or woman. Romans 8, let's read verse 7 and verse 8. Our subject, the cure for frustrated Christians. Romans 8, I forgot to greet our online audience. Please forgive me. Thank you for joining us. I believe most of you have been with us night after night, day after day. Thank you and may God torrentially bless your lives. Romans 8, reading verse 7 and verse 8. When it's on the screen, somebody say amen. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. And anyone who's against God is against anything that is of God. So if you hate God, 
You've got to hate the angels. You've got to hate God's church. You must hate God's spirit. You must hate God's son. The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That simply means it is impossible for the carnal mind to love God. Verse 8, so that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Cannot please God. Now listen to a familiar verse. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. The Bible says to please God you must have faith. The Bible says the carnal mind cannot please God. So the carnal mind has... Okay, don't treat me so badly. Think. Put two and two together. I absolutely insist that you think. Hebrews 11.6 Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Romans 8.7, 8.8 8, The carnal mind cannot, though that are in the flesh, cannot please God. So they that are in the flesh have... No, f uh, God bless this section and that section and that section. <laughs> they that are in the flesh have no faith, no saving faith. That's the condition of the unregenerate regenerate mind. Let us go to John 3. We'll read verse 6. Our subject the cure for frustrated Christians. John 3. Verse 6, reading from the lips of Christ himself. John 3, verse 6. Let me commend those of you who are still looking for it, even though it's on the screen. That way you learn where the books of the Bible are. You just read the screen, you do not develop the ability to quickly locate the books of the Bible. So those of you still looking, God bless you. I'm not joking. God bless you. By the way, who can recite all 66 books in order? Raise your hand. Then we'll come back to John 3, 6. All 66 books in order. Come. You raise your hand or very large finger. Come. Come. You raise your hand. Come. If she is weak in the knees, somebody help her. Come. 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 Yes. Come. 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 Can you recite all 66 books in order? What? You can. Say amen for sister, I can. All right, here you go. Genesis, Exodus. No, hold the mic, hold the mic. No, 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 stand right here, stand right here. <laughs> we can see you above this thing, go ahead. <sighs> You all did first and then I thought we were all going to raise our hands, but anyways. Um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, Ferguson and Kings, Ferguson and Conquest, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joe, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Mika, Nahum, Habakkuk, Sophania, Haggai, Zachariah, Malag. <sighs> <laughs> Uh, New Testament, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, <laughs> Joy and Eggs, Romans. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> God bless you, God bless you. Now, if you think it's easy to stand here and do that, it is not. Put her under different, more relaxed conditions and she'll do it. Up here, your mind just turns to paint. All right. John 3, reading verse 6. Listen to Jesus Christ. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Think. Spirit, that's all it is, is Christ. Flesh, that's all it is. Now, we are born flesh. Are you with me? That's why Christ told Nicodemus, he must be born again. 
So you go from flesh to spirit. When Jesus said that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that's all it can do. The works of the flesh. Let that sink in. All the flesh can do are the works of the flesh. And not one single work of the flesh contributes to salvation. So when someone in the flesh tries to do the work of the spirit, what's our subject? What is that person setting himself or herself up for? Frustration. Let's look at the flesh. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Our subject, the cure for frustrated Christians. Do you have Galatians 5, 19? Is it on the screen? You may read with me. But the works of the flesh are manifest. Notice the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like ad infinitum. What does ad infinitum mean? on and on to infinity that is all the flesh can do you and I need no help from God to do that we do it genetically we do it instinctively we do it automatically we do it because that's what we are in the flesh Romans 8 7 the carnal mind is enmity against God. That's the carnal mind. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now, let's put up verse 22 and verse 23. Are they there? But the fruit of the Spirit, say it with me, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If there is no law against them, it means they are all what? If there is a law against them, they are what? Starts with a U, then an N, then an L, then an A, then a W, I'm getting exhausted. Then an F, unlawful. <laughs> if the law is against 19 to 21, they are unlawful. Now, while the Bible doesn't say directly there's a law against 19 through 21, the very fact it tells us there's no law against 22 to 23, we think our, with our minds, we reason, it means there's a law against 19 to 21. That is unlawful. But love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there's no law, which means they are lawful. Ah, thank you thank you lawful that is lawful living the law approves this lifestyle let's put up 19 through 21 not up there yet 19 to 21 our experts in the back is it there now the law condemns that now look at the list 19 through 21 which one of them contributes to salvation none now listen to jesus christ that which is born of the flesh that's all it is put up 22 to 23 again forgive me forgive me all this athletic exercise 22 23 is that there now i want to keep twisting my head you tell me now this is what God wants. There's nothing in that 
that contributes to the flesh. There was nothing or there is nothing in 19 to 21 that contributes to a saved life. There's nothing in that list that destroys a person spiritually. Everything in 19 to 21 destroys the soul. Now, when you are in this, no, not put up back up 21 to 19 to 21. Sorry, my brother, try not to faint. 19 to 21. Okay. When this is your condition, are you with me? And in that condition, you try to do 22 to 23. Are you following me? What are you putting yourself up for? Frustration. Because you cannot. You just cannot. Let's look at 22 and 23. Now, stay, or keep 20, 90, 20 on up there. The works of the flesh. That's what you do. Your works. That's what the flesh does. The work of the flesh, our natural behavior. Adultery, fornication, and cleanness, this long stink list. Now, 22, 23, we don't have the works of the spirit. Is that there? We have the fruit. What is produced in you? Am I talking to myself? The fruits, something produced in you, because you cannot produce that. They are the fruits of whom? Not the fruits of Kudakwashi. Not the fruits of Fortunate. Not the fruits of Pastor Mensa. The fruits of the Spirit. The spirit does not need your help to produce these fruits. Then you may ask, what is my, my part? What is my role in this? Yes, you have a role. Review and Herald, October 30, 1888, paragraph 3. What did I say? I love the way you die. <laughs> Review and Herald, October 30, 1888, paragraph 3. In the work of salvation, God requires the cooperation of man. In other words, there's something the Spirit does. But in order for the Spirit to do what he's required to do, there's something you and I must do. Now, let's get a clue. Let's go to John 5. John 5, I thought since it's evening it would be cooler. I have been misled, deceived. John 5, we read 36, 37, and 38. But I have greater works than whom? Greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father have given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father have sent me, 37, and the Father himself which have sent me hath borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. By the way, Jesus is telling us the Father has a shape, but we don't know what it is. Are you with me? He has a voice. He has a shape because he's a person. Not necessarily the way we are a person, but he's an intelligent being. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Now, read 38 with intense microscopic attention. Come on. And ye have not his word, come on, abiding where? In you. Why is that? Why is the word not in them? Finish the verse. For whom he has sent him... Aha, uh -huh. now, to have the word in us means we have Jesus. Let's turn that around. To have Jesus in us, we must have what? The word. Now, when Jesus is within by the word, 
Here's what the word is. Go to John 6. The very next chapter. John 6. Let me pray again. Father, as I proceed, please tighten your grip on every part of me. That verily it will be you speaking, not me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. John 6. Verse 63. Listen to Christ. Do you have it? You may read with me if you're not too shy and you have my version. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Stop. What does quickeneth mean? To bring to life. Thank you, my brother in a brightly colored shirt. To bring to life. It is the spirit that quickeneth. That's why God is the judge of the quick and the dead dead no life quick your life it is the spirit that quickeneth gives life the flesh profiteth nothing Jesus said flesh is flesh spirit is spirit if the spirit gives life what does the flesh give mm -hmm. Galatians 5 19 through 21 describes a dead person who is still walking around it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing finish 63 now the words that I speak unto you come on there's mm -hmm. yes now when the word of God is received whom do we receive Christ but how is Christ represented by the Holy Spirit why do I have to say that you see Christ is still physical so he cannot literally come and jump into your heart. He's represented by the Spirit. But when Christ prayed and said, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, the Greek word for another is alos, meaning someone just like. There's another Greek word for other means heteros, one of a different kind. A heterosexual is attracted to someone of a different uh, gender or sex, you see? Another comforter just like me. So that effectively, when you have him, you have me. Jesus says, this word is spirit. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. And it's life. What life? Eternal life. When this life is in you, let me ask you this. If you were walking down the road and you saw a man lying on the side of the road and you wanted to determine if he was alive or dead, what would you look for, your doctors? What do you call them? All this evidence that he's alive, you call them what? V-S, what's that? Vital signs. You put a mirror to his nose to see if there's a vapor on it. You put your head to his heart. You touch his pulse. You see if the skin is warm. You're looking for vital signs. Now, if the word of life is in you, it must produce, come on, vital signs. If there are no vital signs, you may have within you the Encyclopedia Britannica, not the word. You may have the church manual, not the word. You may have National Geographic, not the word. If the word which is life is within you, there must be vital signs. And the vital signs are Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And so Jesus says, Matthew 5, 14 to 16, he is the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light. What does this bring to you? Spirit and life. Whose spirit? The spirit of Christ. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works which is the works produced in you by the spirit and glorify your father which is in heaven let the light shine Christ teaches the very same doctrine using different symbology let us go now to John 15 it is now five minutes to nine 
I'll release you hopefully by 9.15. I started at 27 to 9. Please don't cheat me of my time. What book did I say? What chapter? We're reading from verse 1. You have that? I hope you're listening. Who has said, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth? Has anyone said that? Uh, no, oh, I'm, I'm, ah, God bless you. I like you. Anybody else? Nobody else? Ah, uh, brother, you're very handsome. You remind me of myself. Yeah, any, any, anybody else? Ah, God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else pray for me? Uh, thank you, whoever you are. Thank you. John 15. Let's read from verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you. How does Christ abide in us? The word. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Now, if the, vine, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, hmm? unless connected to the vine, who bears the fruit? think listen again we have the branch we have the vine the branch cannot bear fruit of itself when attached to the vine fruits appear who produces the fruits the vine put a name on the vine Jesus Christ represented by the spirit there is heaven and there is earth now look at verse 1 again let's look at heaven and earth I am the true vine and my father is the husband man there is a key word in that verse can you guess what that word is true God bless you true which means there is false the true comes from the false comes from mm-hmm I am the true vine. There's a false vine. Go to 2 Corinthians 11. Let's read verse 14. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14. It's inching its way towards 9 o'clock. We have 2 Corinthians. Not there yet. Chapter 11 reading verse 14. Our subject, the cure for frustrated Christians. When it's on there, tell me. You may read with me, and no marvel, for Satan himself, stop, that's the intensive, not just Satan, Satan himself, not his first lieutenant, Satan himself. What did I say? What did the Bible say? Satan himself, keep reading, is transformed into an angel of, mm-hmm, Here's light. Here's light. Which one is Christ? Which is Satan? Therefore it is no great thing, next verse, if his ministers be transformed into the what? Ministers of righteousness. Here's righteousness. Here's righteousness. Which is which? What I'm trying to say is there's a heavenly version and there's an earthly version. Go to John chapter 1. John 1, let's read verse 6, uh, verse 9, sorry. John 1, verse 9. Our subject, the cure for frustrated Christians. John 1, verse 9. You have that? Read with me. That was the true light which lighteth every man. Come on. That cometh into the world. There is a true light. Which means, there's a true vine. There's a false light. There's a true vine, which means there's a false vine. Go to John 17. John 17, we'll read a very familiar verse, verse 3. 
You know it? Let's just say. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, know thee, the only true God, which means there is a false God. Now, look at the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. There's an earthly version of all of that. So that someone can pass off as a first-class child of God who is merely a refined child of the devil. Because the fruit to be a fruit from heaven, it must be produced by the Spirit of God. Now, go to John chapter 14. Let's read 27. Let me strengthen this point. Not me. Let the Bible strengthen this point. Those of you online, I hope you're still with us wherever you are. John 14, verse 27, our subject, the cure for frustrated Christians, 9 o'clock. When did I say I'd release you? Did I really say that? Okay, what book did I say? What chapter? What verse? Read with me. Peace, I live with you. My peace give I unto you. Keep reading. Not as the world giveth. So, what is Christ saying? There's a peace the world gives. That peace lasts until Christ comes to destroy sinners. That's not the peace I give you, says Jesus Christ. The peace Christ gives is found in Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. The peace of heaven is a right relationship with God. There's a true peace from above. There's a false peace. There's a true light. There's a false light. There's a true bread. There's a false bread. There's a true shepherd. There's a false shepherd. There's a true church. There are false churches. Now, only the Spirit can produce that which originates from heaven. The fruits of the Spirit love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. In order to receive the heavenly version of those, we must receive the Spirit of Christ. How? By receiving the Word of God within. And so Jesus tells us, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye the branches. That's John 15, 15, 5. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. In that passage, Jesus does not tell the disciples to bear fruit. You know what he tells them to do? Ah, thank you. Ah, you're, you're thinking, you're thinking. Now I feel better. He tells them, abide. Keep, stay in that soil. If you stay in that soil, I'll produce fruit. This concept of abiding is absolutely essential. Let's go to John 15. Let's start from 4. We'll go all the way down to 10. We're looking at abide. The Greek word means to stay. Meno, stay, remain, continue. Don't visit Jesus. Talking to myself again. Nobody's listening. Don't, Jesus is not a museum. Don't visit Jesus. Move in. John 15, we're looking for the word abide. From verse 4, Father in heaven, continue to be with us, please I pray. Restrain my carnal nature. Let the Spirit have his way with me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I appeal to you. Amen. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. 
I am the vine, he are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me he can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they burn. If ye abide in me, and I words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Here it is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I love you. Continue Continue ye in my love. The word continues the same thing, abide. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his. How many times? Eleven. But there are more than eleven. If you read microscopically and you realize some things are not written, but they belong. Let's try it again. Abide in me. Huh? And that applies to whom abide in me applies to whom you and I in you so you abide in me I abide in you so the world really belongs there are you with me no you're not with me who's an English teacher listen listen abide in me and I in you add one word and say the same thing abide in me and I Yes, I lost 10 pounds trying to get that across to you. Abide in me, and I abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in a vine, no more can ye, except you, and you do that, you find it is more than 11. Christ is stressing, stay with me. Stay. If you stay, I'll produce. Do we have a part to play? Yes. What's our part? Stay. Not produce. So the Christians running around trying to produce light. And you cannot. That's the work of the Spirit. When a human being attempts to do the work of the Spirit, the end result is monumental frustration. Stay. Now, Jesus says, my words abide in you. This is how you stay. The study of the word. Because you realize it is by the word that Christ abides in you. And so you keep the word in you. You keep the word in you to keep Christ in you. You keep the word in. Bible study is keeping Christ. Not just study, but obedience. And then you pray. You pray. Not simply on your knees. You pray in your car. You pray when brushing your teeth. You pray when taking a shower. You pray when you turn your computer on, you're waiting for it to come alive. Or you recite a Bible verse, which is a form of praying. You're abiding. You're abiding. You're abiding. And you see, the Word of God is alive. Consequently, it must produce vital signs. Vital, the word vital means life. Sign is evidence of. Evidence of life will invariably appear when the word of life abides within. But here's what we have. We have Christians who have no time for God's word. And then trying to be good. You may produce a goodness that is of this variety. Not the one from that variety. Here's what the Bible says about us. 7 after 9. Go to Romans 3. Romans 3. I said 9.15, but only God's word is absolutely reliable. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure you agree. Romans 3, let's read from verse uh, 10. 10, yes, 10. Do you have that? Is it there? As it is written... Read on. There is none righteous, no, not one. Stop. I don't care how nicely you dress. You cannot produce righteousness. You can produce decency. And that's fine. We love decency. You can live in this world, never commit a crime, never get a speeding ticket, never break into your neighbor's house and go straight to hell. Because it's not your goodness that saves you it is the goodness of Christ are you listening to me most people who are lost will be decent people nice people 
but no connection with Christ. And so the goodness, the niceness originated from beneath, not from above. There's, as it is written, there's none righteous, no not one. There's none that understandeth, verse 11. There's none that seeketh after God. God has to seek you. And so Jesus told uh, Zacchaeus, the son of man is come to seek and to save. What you can do is say, Father, I surrender my life to you. To you. Well, if you surrender something to God, God must control it. Are you following me? Or it's not surrendered. How does God control it? These are his do's and don'ts. The, this is his power. This is his guidance. This is his manual for successful Christian life that demonstrates the qualities that originate from above. And so your number one challenge is to let nothing keep you from this. Let me recommend a couple things to do when you study the Bible. What's your favorite verse? Yes, you, you, you. You don't have one. What is it? Revelation 14 verse 6. Which says what? Fly in the midst of heaven. Mm -hmm. The last thing gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. All right. You take that verse, my unnamed sister, and you read it. Read it ten times. There's some movies you've watched ten times. Are you with me? <laughs> you love the movie. You watch it. You watch it. You watch it. Read it ten times. Close your mind off to all distractions. Your boyfriend calls you. Delete the call. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. You read that ten times. I'm deadly serious. Having read it ten times, first you pray, Father, open my eyes. Psalm 119 verse 18, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. John 16, 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. You pray, Father, teach me. Ten times. Then you ask question one. Write these down. What is the verse saying? And I got this from a friend of mine. What is the verse saying? It is easy to read words and miss the message. Let me show you something. Put the fourth commandment on the screen. Exodus 20, 8 to 11. Particularly verse 10. Exodus 8, 20, uh, Exodus 20, sorry, 8 to 11 on the screen quickly before I take you all the way to 10 o'clock. Is it up there? No, not yet. Exodus 20, okay. Say it with me. Remember, come on, we're Adventists. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. You keep going. Thou, come on. Come on. Uh-huh. Stop. Let me show you something. Oh, Mr. Cameraman, do I have your permission to move? Okay. Can I move? Can I move? Well, I won't move. Please, don't collapse. Let's look at this verse now. Let's read. Let's read from... For in six, uh, but, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son nor thy daughter then people say nor thy manservant but there's no nor before manservant but the brain fills in the gap are you with me when you read the bible the brain fills in gaps or removes what should be there go to psalm 119 psalm 119 now that i've told you that you're on your toes now okay okay psalm 119 Let's read verse um, 97. Psalm 119, verse 97. Psalm 119, verse 97. And let's pretend as though I didn't say what I just said. <laughs> Try to read just normally. Are you there? 
Let's read with a little speed. It's up there now. All right. Let's read together. Oh, how? Most people, they say what? Oh, how? I love them. Yes. Even though they're looking at the only reason why you said, oh, how? <laughs> Did I catch you? Yes or no? Yes. They say, oh, how I love thy law. That's not the word says. It says, oh, how love I. But the brain changes things around. Do you understand why I say, read how? Microscope. What is written? All right. Keep it quiet. God bless you for listening. God bless you for listening. The devil is not intimidated if you read the Bible. He is scared if you really read the Bible. And so I say again, read a passage 10 times. Pray first, Father, open my eyes, please. Then you ask, what is the verse saying? That's question one. Question two, what is it saying to me? Two. Three, is the verse revealing a sin in my life? And if your answer is yes, confess it immediately. Four, is the verse revealing a duty I need to start performing? An area in which I've been delinquent. You commit yourself to God, Father, I will begin doing whatever. Five, what has the verse taught me about the character of God? And six, does this verse help me to understand another verse? Let me give you an example. Go to John 1.1. It's 9.17. Please pay no attention. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, you have no clue who the Word is. Let's go to verse 3. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that... Now you have a clue. This Word created. Then you go to verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Your clue is strengthened. Now we go to verse 14. Now you read it. And the word was made flesh. Ah, what have you learned now? That the word in John 1.1 1, 1 is whom? Jesus Christ. Verse 14 with verse 1 clearly identifies Christ as having always existed with the Father and is one with the Father. So the question you ask, does this verse help me to understand another verse? Go to uh, Matthew 12, verse 28. Matthew 12, 28. One more example of one verse explaining another. Matthew 12, 28. Is it there? Read with me, but if I cast out devils, how? By the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Read that again. But if I cast out devils by what? The Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Keep this in mind. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. Now, when you read the Gospels, particularly the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they are very similar. That's why they call Synoptic. One explains the other. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, I keep hitting that, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. Go to Luke now 11 verse 20. Luke 11 verse 20. You have it? Luke eleven twenty. 20, is it up there? Read for me nice and loud. What does that say? But if I... Come on, read clearly, but what? 
by the finger of God do what? No doubt the kingdom of God. How does Matthew say devils are cast out? What does Luke say? What is the finger of God? The law was written by the finger of God. Who wrote the law? The Holy Spirit. The Father commanded it to be spoken. The Son spoke it. Finish my words. The Holy Spirit wrote it. One verse explaining another. So as you study the Bible, you ask, what are the questions I gave you? Question one. What is the verse saying? Two. What is it saying to me? Bible study must be personal. The primary reason for Bible study is to discover God's will for your life that day. Three. Is the verse revealing? If the answer is yes, what do you do? When? Immediately. Question four. Is it revealing a duty I need to perform? If the answer is yes, commit yourself to do that immediately. Never wait to do what's right. Question five. Does it reveal anything about the character of God? Six. Does this verse help me explain, understand another verse? Go to Genesis 1 verse 3 quickly. I know you need to go and sleep and snore, but give me a few more minutes. Genesis 1 verse 3. And I'm closing the cure for frustrated Christians. Let the Spirit do His work. But He does His work from within, and He comes in through the Word. Christ comes through the Word. Christ in the Spirit. Genesis 1 verse 3. Say it with me. And God said, let there be light. Stop. That's all I need. Say it again. Say it again. One more time. Keep that in mind. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Well, the light from below just went out. The light from above is still shining. Do you have 2 Corinthians 4? Oh, it came back on. Satan goes and comes back, you see. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. What does that say? For God... Come on, read, read. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. Stop. What verse is Paul quoting? Genesis 1 verse 3. Now we're putting 2 and 2 to get 4. Does this verse help me explain another verse? Genesis 1 verse 3 tells us, And God said, Let there be light. Paul tells us those words were a what? A commandment. So light was created how? By a commandment. Well then listen to verse 6 of Genesis. And God said, let there be a firmament. How was the firmament made? By command. Well, let's go to verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. That was done by command. You go to verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. How did we get grass? By command. And so by comparing Genesis 1-3 with 2 Corinthians 4-6, we learn that all of creation came into existence by command. That's why it is only by obeying God's commands you fit into this universe. All right. The cure for frustrated Christians. Let the Holy Spirit do his work. You cannot, nor I, can produce a fruit of the Spirit. Which originates from, come on, from above. But we know there's an earthly version that originates from beneath. There's an earthly light. There's an earthly bread. There's an earthly God. There's an earthly shepherd. There's an earthly door. There's an earthly everything. Only this consistently taken in can give you the optical equipment to discern the earthly from the heavenly. There are many people, again I say, they produce the earthly versions of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Lost. Let me show you how the Bible puts it. Go to Gen not Genesis, Matthew 7. Let's read from verse 21 quickly, quickly, quickly. I keep saying I'm finishing. I say that five times. 
You have Matthew 7, Father in heaven, I'm truly finishing now. Assist me in these final minutes. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Matthew 7, verse 21 and onward. Are you there? Read with me. What does that say? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. Stop. Which means you go to some churches, uh, Lord, Lord. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Praise the Lord. All of that sounds like a Christian. Are you following me? Not everyone that says, be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Will enter into my kingdom. But it all sounds like church language. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Keep reading. Many shall say to me in that day, what? Lord, Lord, have we not? Mm-hmm. Stop. Isn't that good? But there's an heavenly version and there's a... Mm -hmm. And in thy name have done, cast out. Uh -huh. And in thy name done many. Yes. Look at that resume. Prophesied. Hmm. Check that. Cast out devils. Check that. Many one fed the poor. Whatever. Check, 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 check. And the whole world is impressed and gives you a medal. It's the earthly version. Then will I profess unto them, come on. I never knew you. But it gets more horrible. Keep reading. Depart from me, ye. What is the iniquity? Prophesying from beneath. Casting out devils from beneath. Many good works from beneath. Christ summarizes that. Iniquity. Lost. There are a lot of people in the church, that's what they're doing, and it looks good. Then they feel God is obligated to save them. I don't know you. I want works produced by the Spirit. That's only possible if the Spirit works. The Spirit doesn't work from the outside in. Finish my words. Inside out. Vital signs. The sign of the Spirit. What does Christ tell us to do in John 15? Abide. What does he tell us in Matthew 5? Let it shine. Get out of the way and let it shine. You are blocking the light by being involved with a non-Adventist boyfriend. <laughs> I'm not joking. This is a serious smile. If you are involved with a non-Adventist partner, break it off tonight the Adventist home page 67 paragraph 1 take a deep breath before I read it did you take a deep breath to connect with an unbeliever is to place yourself on Satan's ground you grieve the Spirit of God and forfeit his protection what did Jesus say let the light shine stop blocking it get rid of that man night or that woman she may look like the queen of Sheba lips as sweet as sadza get rid of her get rid of her she's not of the faith are you with me go to Genesis 6 quickly 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 then I'll stop how many times is that four times Genesis 6 quickly now let me get out of the way and let you go to your bed to your rooms and study the Bible Genesis 6 from verse 1 and it came to pass as men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose now what sin is God identifying in that passage mixed relationship now it is the only crime identified as the Bible describes the condition of the world that led to the flood. Now they're doing many other things. The only one specified is mixed relationship. Get rid of that man. Get rid of that woman. There's no such thing in the Bible or Ella White as boyfriend evangelism or girlfriend evangelism. May it no matter to me how angry you are with me now. I'm not concerned. 
I want you saved. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14. Go there quickly. I'm ending. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 <laughs> don't make me laugh I'm in the pulpit <laughs> okay do you have 2 Corinthians 6 14 be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what have with un and what communion have now where is Paul quoting from let me tell you and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness Paul is using that he says believers you are light unbelievers I didn't say it but that's what I meant now Paul says don't mix the two because in creation God built in a spiritual lesson light darkness don't mix when, Christ, when God told the Israelites don't intermingle with the other nations all the other nations had religions are you with me the problem is not he has a religion it is not yours a seventh day Adventist minister is not authorized to marry an Adventist and a non-Adventist if he does he should have his credentials removed he can marry a Baptist and a Catholic he can marry Lutheran or Presbyterian. He can marry a horse and a cat. He cannot marry an Adventist and a non-Adventist. Stop blocking the light. It wants to shine. I'm finishing. You see this? Is there power in this cord? Yes or no? Yes, that's why it can magnify the voice. You see, there's power in this cord. But I'm not affected. The power is blocked by what? It starts with an I. Insulation. The power is in there, but it does me no harm. The spirit is frustrated by the insulation of sin. He is there, but he cannot get out. Sin insulates us against the transforming power. Jesus says, let the light shine. Remove the insulation of that non-Adventist boyfriend. I'm not joking. There's God listening to me. If you don't know how to do it, call him tomorrow. An elder and I will meet with him and tell him this is finished. I am not. You call him. An elder and I will meet with him and explain why you are wrong. We will compliment him for having good taste. We'll tell him you are wrong. You're misrepresenting the church. You're giving him the impression the church stands for this. It does not. And then we'll tell him goodbye. And the Bible says, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and do what? Cast it from thee. Do not continue the friendship. Because he'll act as though he's dying. Your maternal instincts will kick in. You'll try to save him. Do not continue the friendship. Break it off. That's it. Let God save him. Remove the hindrances to the light. Don't send yourself to hell. All right, I'm not joking, and it really am. I'm finishing. How many of you will say, Father, I've been frustrated. I've been trying to do the work of the Spirit. I understand my work is to abide. Stay with Christ, not visit. Stay with him. How do I do that? And he stays with me through the word and prayer. How many now? We recommit their lives to staying with Christ. Can I see your hand? Stay with him. Stand with me. Stay with him. Stand up. Now for those of you who are panicking, I will not ask for a show of hands who is in a mixed relationship. Don't worry. But the recording angel has written that I told you you're wrong. 
you're wrong. You're wrong. Stop it. Don't commit suicide. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Our Father in heaven, the gospel isn't only hallelujah, praise the Lord. Very often the gospel is rebuke. When Jesus came preaching, the Bible says he began to say, repent. John Baptist said, repent. When Christ sent the disciples out to preach, they went out and they preached everywhere that men should repent. Father, repentance is at the heart and soul of the gospel. Without repentance, the removal of sin, how can anything shine out? Father, Christ tells us repeatedly, abide. How is that? The word prayer. Studied and obeyed. He tells us, let the light shine. Don't block it. Don't block it. Remove the insulation that renders ineffective the electrical power of the spirit in the life. Let it shine. Please, God, remind these young men, young women, that a God who gave the life of his son for their salvation surely deserves their faithfulness, their obedience, and their service. For those who are involved in relationships that you do not approve, forgive them, Father. Now prick their consciences, give them no rest until they do what is right, which is to cut it off and cast it from them. As far as the east is from the west. If I have been too hard, forgive me. Watch over us tonight. Bring us back tomorrow day. God, I pray from my heart. Bless our online audience. Father, when you come, save us. In Jesus' name I pray. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Good night, everyone. I love you for loving God. May the Lord watch over us as we sleep.